I'm actually going to be having a new wedding ceremony for my friends and family with my husband, and we're going to have it at a castle. So you know what that means? I went shopping. And oh, I hope I didn't break anything. But in there, I'm going to be creating my brand new wedding dress. And this means my forever wedding dress that I want my children to look back on my photos and be like, wow, that's a mommy in her wedding dress versus my previous wedding dress as before. Yeah, so it's not the fact that I didn't like my previous wedding dress, no. It's like, that was a rush job. And I really want a dress that is what I want in my fairy tale Cinderella wedding dress. That's what I've always wanted and you know what? I'm going to make it. So my husband went out and got me the fabrics for it that I asked because <laughs> he went to America. I'm still in Denmark. And so he got me the fabrics. So this is going to be a long arduous process of me showing you how I'm going to be making my wedding dress step by step. That way if you are interested you can do it yourself. So stay tuned for the entire series and thanks so much for watching. If you're new to my channel make sure to subscribe. Let's go ahead and get started. So it's time to see what's inside this bag. This bag is from Joann's. I'm not sponsored. First things first, I'm going to be using my base fabric as this nice mesh. It's kind of like a tool, unfortunately. So it's a mesh tool and actually it feels amazing on my hands. Just in case we got a lot, just if I rip something and something bad. So this will be going a long way and giving me some oomph in the skirt. By the way, this does not reply to that. So this is the first fabric that we have here. The second fabric is going to be my actual very nice embellishing fabric. This one is actual bridal material that we got from Joann's and it looks so beautiful. So I'm very happy that my husband got me this much material and I have a lot of room to play with. So I'll be using the entire bottom portion of this stuff here. You can see the crystals, the pearls, the sequins. This is very beautiful stuff. I'm going to be using this into the bottom hem, of course, because I'm bougie like that. And then, of course, we got this part here. It's just very well done, like props to Joann's. This was probably the most expensive fabric being, I think, about $50 per yard, I think. So you could already see it starting to come along. And then, of course, no dress is complete with its alternate fabric. So this is actually going to be the skirt fabric and the base fabric for the inside of the dress because I just need it to have sheer volume. It's a little thin, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to put a little bit of tool on the inside. And I hope to goodness that it's as big as I need it to be. So this one I have five yards of because I want my dress to be huge. For extra embellishments, we got silver string so I can hand embroider. Just in case, we have like four of them. You never know how much thread you're gonna run out. Also got some extra crystals to bling in certain areas. And then a bag of pearls. All in all, I'm not supposed to know how much this costed. Uh, and here's another bag of crystals. Grand total came out to about 200. You took all of this, this was three yards actually, not one and a half. So this is three yards and then a little bit extra. So this is what we're working with today. We're gonna to be working with all these materials to work on my wedding dress. My first wedding dress was a sweetheart neckline and I really didn't want it to be the same. So instead I wanted a V neckline down to my cleavage. I wanted it to be very elegant and pretty and also I wanted sleeves. So I put a lot of paper onto my dress form and drafted out the pattern that I wanted and then I cut off the pattern. I have a dart in the front so it's nice and cinched but I'm going to go ahead and cut it out into a few different pieces. This is what my pieces look like laid out. I have a side panel piece, I have the front piece, and then I have a back piece. So, of course, what I'm going to do is cut it all out. Make sure that I have two pieces of each. Now, following my pattern pieces, I'm going to sew it all together, making sure that it's aligned properly. I thought the mesh was actually going to be too light, so I decided to use an A-line pattern such as this. I'm going to be using the white material underneath it and then lay the lace on top. So again, I'm going to be pinning down the material and then cutting it out on my white material. Here 
here, I'm actually going to deviate a little bit from the pattern and make the skirt bigger. I made sure to spread out the rest of the skirt pieces, but just in case it's not the same length, it's all right. I could always hem it to the right length it needs to be. Now let's take it to the sewing machine and sew it all together. So I wanted to be completely transparent. I started working on the sleeves and this is what it looks like. The sleeves are really long, but they're too forward because of the pattern I made. It was making the dress sit really weird and then I realized the shape isn't everything that I want it to be. So I'm probably going to start the top over from scratch and then keep the bottom part. Ugh, like I just, I, I like the shape that it has right now, but it doesn't fit. So now we're gonna go back and I'm going to be using part of a pattern that's commercially made, such as this one. Oh wait, yeah, this one. I'm going to be using the C pattern as long well and using the A sleeves. I don't want the sleeves to be exactly what this is, but that's what's going on right now. Documenting the process. Okay, even though I don't need all the pattern pieces, I'm going to go ahead and cut and separate them out right now. And then the pieces that I don't need, I'll just fold and put them back away in the little pamphlet. Thing that I learned is after you cut out your pattern pieces and they're still kind of crinkly, you're supposed to actually iron them. So now we have more ironing. Always ironing. Ironing for life. Mm. Measuring myself. I figured out that I will be using a size 10 in this pattern. So now I'm going to be cutting it out on this tool. Can you see the tool? It's kind of like see-through, but the main reason we're doing tool is because I want to add the lace on top and give it the illusion that I'm not wearing a top. Okay, so we've had a long day of trying to recuperate from the loss that I just had with my wedding dress. This is where we're at now. I reshaped the cups here and then I actually sewed down the sides. They're no longer basting stitches and this is a brand new top. Ah! A brand new top. The sleeves actually fit this time and then the back is not sealed. The back isn't sealed because whenever I lift my arms a little bit, it makes the dress wrench up. So I have to figure out if I want it to be a zipper or not, or what to do. I need to figure out if I want to install a boning channel or anything like that. But as you can see, this dress is very sheer. I don't like it being too sheer. Like, I don't, I don't know. But right now I wanna go ahead and start like sewing it on and then detailing it and then figure out what I'm gonna do about making it feel nice because it, it looks nice right now but it's just held up with pins. And then I wanna go ahead and start using the lace. So, hooray, that's gonna take forever and I don't want my hands to hurt. My corset that I'm sewing in is actually blue, which is kind of like a fashion faux pas. You shouldn't put something darker underneath white, but I think it'll be fine. Anyways, I'm installing the boning channels right now using this light blue ribbon. This is actually one of my favorite corset patterns in it's Simplicity S5006, and it's in the costume section. I'm going back to my original pattern that I started at the beginning and using the mesh fabric that I just bought, and I'm going to be cutting this out. My original pattern did not have a sleeve, so I went ahead and made my own pattern using my measurements. I wanted my sleeve to go all the way to my fingers, so I just left it as long as possible. Now I'm going to take everything that I just cut out to the sewing machine and sew it together. I love light purple, it's one of my favorite colors and I decided to put it into my wedding dress as the zipper of the back of the mesh. All right, so I wanted to show you the difference of having the stretchy mesh. Having stretchy mesh is so important for when you want to raise your hands up, especially if you want to toss your bouquet. Having stretchy mesh is also good to kind of like have an illumination of like imagining that this is your skin color and tone. This is kind of flesh tone, obviously it's mesh. I am going to be adding the corset part and dress part separately to this and not the same way that I had originally thought. Um, so now I'm thinking of adding it lower, but I think that's too sexy for my wedding. So I'm gonna add it here. Um, this is obviously the lining. So I'm gonna position this one first and it's gonna be attached like this. This way, it just looks better. Um, once I have this positioned properly, I'm going to sew it down and then I'm going to add the dress on top of it. The reason why I'm doing it this way instead of sewing the mesh in between 
is because I definitely want this to stay put. Like I couldn't get this on and make it fit unless I had done the zipper. So the way I'm going to be doing this is adding the corset part or adding this lining part first. So I'll be adding this first while here and then I'm going to sew the dress on top. Once I have all of that together and this part together, I'm going to add the corset lacing at the side together there and then close the seam last. The reason why I'm doing it that way is because this way I know that it fits the mesh to a T. And this way I can still kind of provide like support. So it looks, it'll look like this. And I'm, I'm kind of excited for it to look, look this tight. Um, very excited. I know this looks very Elsa-y or Sleeping Beauty Aurora-esque, but I needed something blue for my wedding and I just thought this would be a nice little addition. So here we are. I just wanted to show you guys all the progress that I've made on my wedding dress. This is what my wedding dress looks like currently. It's kind of frumpy looking right here because I had to hand sew a few parts. And right here, it doesn't have the right booby shape because of my fake boobs. <laughs> Anyways. So what I'm gonna be doing now is making the skirt part overlay that goes on top of it. And then I will be embellishing on top of it and cutting out the parts that I do not like. Like this, this was supposed to be like this deep and it wasn't. So that makes me really upset. So I'm gonna go back and work on it and fix out these kinks. Now, because I cut this at a weird angle and this was not a pattern that actually fits me, I'm just gonna have to hide it a lot <laughs> with a lot of embellishments. And of course, you know, I am going to be using another fabric for a train that goes on top. This way it becomes detachable. So it's gonna be like a multi, multi-layered like dress, kind of like, I think of like a macaroon. Looking at it now and there's this top part here and then this kind of just like rises up and then this this just looks so cool right here like this bottom piece and then if I was to extend it it just doesn't look right so I don't know I'm so torn between like just cutting off this bottom edge and not making it the scallop edge but then I can keep all this part here as extra to go on top of my outfit itself so, I mean, a lot of it's gonna go into the skirt anyways. I just wanna make sure that the pattern looks nice. If I cut this and I screw up, there's no going back. So, good luck to me! What I decided to do was actually use the larger scallop edge instead of the bottom edge. Now I'm folding over the fabric and I'm going to cut out the actual pattern on top of it. This way I have a lot of space and that way I'm going to maximize as much fabric as possible. I'm only cutting up to my waistband because my bodice is going to be a little bit different. I decided to remove the entire bottom part so that way I can just cut it off really easy. And this way I can just fold it and go. This is the first time of having to like go around and cut this bottom part. So now I have my lace edging that I really want. Let's get to cutting. mention something extremely important. So the lace here that we cut, it has these beads at the edge and we still need to sew this edge to the other pieces. So what you have to do is remove your beads and take them off. And then make sure you have the string on the inside if you're if you are working with like a beaded material. And then remove the string on the inside and then go ahead and sew it down. Once you have sewed it down, go ahead and then cut these tiny little tassels off because you don't want any of the other beads falling off during your wedding day. Um, I am going to go back with some of the beads that I have, such as these here, and I'm going to sew them back on in different places to give a little bit of bling. When I was cutting, a lot fell off the fabric, so I definitely want to put those back on without having to buy more. So I just want to show you that I went ahead and sewed down most of the dress itself and then I'm going to be pinning it to the dress. It doesn't have all the pieces so I'm going to have to go back and alter some spots but 
uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the front and it will wrap around. So it'll look really cool. I'm really excited to see how this will play out and I still have a lot of extra lace pieces that I can use to sew on top of the mesh and still go down the arms like I had originally planned. So let's go ahead and finish sewing this and then we can tack it down to the dress itself. All right, just because my husband is in the other room doesn't mean he's allowed in this room so you can hear him singing. But we are currently sewing on the skirt. I'm gonna be sewing it more on this part than the netting here only because the netting here is gonna get covered a butt ton with all of the scrap pieces of lace. So you can see it here. And with any of the beads that fall off, like I said before, I'm actually going to be using that on top of the lace when we put the dimension here. So it'll look really nice. It's coming along really pretty and I know it looks really funny and you can see a little bit of the puckering that's going to disappear I just really didn't want to do it the correct way apparently all right so let's go ahead and fast forward me sewing this down it's a long process in the making but I want to show you what it looks like now so I went ahead and added the lace like we did just a second ago, you know? And now it's attached to the dress. But now, as you know, with corsets and if you make a dress, there's going to be this gap from each side. And in order to make this smaller, we're going to use some elastic. But first we're going to sew this together here at the pretty part. I'm going to make a casing on top of it, probably using a white ribbon. And then I'm going to feed a small bit of elastic through. This way I can get in and out of the dress easier. So, so far, this is what it looks like. This is my wedding dress so far and I'm loving it. So I'm going to go ahead and just quick baste using stitch and cut off the manetting here that I do not need and then add it. In previous videos, I've shown you how to work with horsehair braid. This time, I'm using a very thick and wide horsehair braid or crinoline as you call it. This is going to help keep some of the shape of the skirt itself. I'm going to be pinning it the same way that I do with all the other types. I'm going to pin it down on the right side of the fabric and then continue all the way around the hemline. Make sure you have enough crinoline to go all the way around your hem. If you don't, you might want to stop, wait, and then get some more. Luckily, I got just enough and it was perfect so I don't have to go get more. Now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and just do a straight stitch down the edge. Because I want the full length of the dress, I'm going to sew it right at the very edge and using my presser foot as a guide. Make sure to have a brand new needle that is nice and sharp. This way, if it gets snagged on the crinoline, it does not get dull. I had a little bit weird hemline when it came down to sewing it all together. So what I'm going to do is go back and cut off this extra salvage edge. Now that the hem is completely done, I'm going to go back and clean it up. I'm going to fold the crinoline over onto the wrong side and sew down the bottom part first. I want the bottom part to be a very nice clean edge and very pretty versus adding in a lining. So I'm just going to do a nice quick stitch there and then I'm going to go back and sew down the top part of the crinoline. I'm going to do this by using a really long string and needle. Make sure to completely secure down your crinoline first on a seam line. This way it doesn't move or shift or get snagged on your shoes that you might be wearing. And then we're going to be doing something called a pick stitch. A pick stitch is where it shows very minimal stitches on the front of the garment, but on the back it shows a very long line. So it's kind of like a really small stitch and then an extremely long stitch. I use pick stitching for all my hemlines whenever I have something important to add such as bias taping or I have to add trim. 
This is a really good technique that I love using, so I highly recommend learning how to pick stitch evenly and perfectly. Once I completely finished pick stitching around the entire crinoline, my skirt was completely finished. Now that I finished the bottom of the skirt, I'm going to go ahead and finish the sleeves so they don't look like sausage tubes. I went ahead and tried it on, pinned it out, and then I'm pinning it together so I get the exact shape that I want on both sides. There are easier methods than this, but this is how I did it. Now, my sleeves, I wanted to, to go all the way down to my fingers. I'm going to add a lot of lace onto my sleeves, but first I need to figure out the design, so I'm going to play around with what I have available in front of me and make a design out of that. Once I'm happy, I'm going to start sewing it down. So, with the sleeves, I cut them open, I laid them out, and now I just did a few placements and I had to cut up a lot of the lace so it would lay nicely. Then I am going to hand sew it down. I've already sew hand sewn some of it down so you could see it here. Nice. And there with all of these like, thank you. With all of these like stitches, it's not going to be all super tacked down because some of it is still on the mesh and you won't notice it. Uh, but if I notice it later and it puckers, I'll just go back. So you can see here that it's still lifted up and I'll just have to hand sew it down. Obviously, I think everyone knows how to hand sew, so I'm just going to tack it down and move on to the next step. I made sure that each sleeve had the same design on both sides. And so now I'm going to go ahead and sew it down using some of the fallen beads and sequins from when I first cut out the lace. I'm going to do this for both sleeves. Now you can see I've fully finished my sleeve. I might go back when I'm done with all these extra little bits here and I might go in with some of the trim of the lace. I actually added more beads and the scalloped edge. This way when it goes around my hand, it will look nice. So now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. Hello. And I'm going to sew this together. In this video, I showed you how I finished my skirt, adding the lace, and I'm finishing the sleeves. Now time for wait for part three. Just kidding, it's coming out soon. Or go check it out now. From the ground over here. Okay, that sounds really stupid, but this is where we are right now. And of course this got stretched weirdly because of how this is hanging. So anyways, I'm going to be covering this with a butt ton of stuff. I'm going to go back and finish this part later and cut it when I'm wearing it again. I wore it earlier today and I already sewed down this really ugly nappy part, so I don't know. Somehow it didn't fit properly, but I can wear this without a bra and it fits beautifully, so there's that. This bottom part here is finished. I think it's this one. I had a little bit of hard time and then I broke the seam. So I need to go back and add a little bit more and then add the finger ring so that my sleeves will fit. Later, when I'm done embellishing all of the bodice, I'm going to have to go back and make this part a tad bit tighter. And then I will finish the neckline. But that is what is finished. Hopefully you guys are excited to see it as much as I am. I have like all of these scrap pieces of... I wouldn't say it's scrap because I had to individually cut out these lace appliques. You can see it right here. So I'm just going to be laying it out and pinning it into place and then I'm going to be sewing it. Oh, I think I just dropped one. So I'm going to be sewing it onto the dress and I'm going to try to make sure that none of these pieces go to waste. All right, so let's go ahead and start pinning. See that I actually got a lot of the dress done, but I have ran out of a lot of beads in here. And these are beads that don't fit on my needle, so I'll go back with a beading needle. Is that a mosquito bite again? Jesus. And then I also got new beads! So we're gonna pour them out in this little bowl and then bring this dress back over. Yay! Let's open this little pasta. Because who needs plastic? All done. Now we have enough beads. I didn't think this was that much. This was actually a good deal. It's not gonna be as clean as these ones, but these ones are a little bit more clear. So I think it'll be fine because most of the top is done anyways. 
So I wanted to check in and show you my dress. So let's pull this baby over here. I had to cover it because the Karis had to come into the room for something. So this is the dress. Whoa! Oh, ah! Voila! Right now we're still working on the bodice. Remember in a previous part that this was not like this. And I want to show you the details. So you can see here all of the details of the beading and such that I've done. I still have a lot of mesh to cover up here. And I only want to go a little bit like up this way and then potentially just cut off the rest of this V shape and then go all the way like this. So it opens up a little bit more space because I get really hot wearing this dress. You can actually see the fine little details and you know, I just want it to really stand out and pop when it comes to the wedding. I have not that many sequins left, so I went out and bought these. I think they're a little bit big, but you know, it'll be fine. Um, it's just, I just need to cover up a little bit more area. It looks really dainty as is, but like this is not that much. And then like the side pieces don't even have that much. I already beaded a lot right here, but if I cover it and then so, these again on top, I think I'll be okay. So I do think this will be enough pieces. Uh, hold on, I, I took some out, so. Let's see. I'm sorry if this video is like forever. It doesn't say how many pieces are in it, but you know, it's just sequins. Cool. All right, so now we are just going to get back into sewing it. And you know, I really don't want to show this process too long because it's just me hand sewing. Hand sewing, in and out, no special technique. And I'm kind of doing it randomly. So this piece is like almost finished, but I want to go across the body strip at the bottom. I have to be careful because there's been several times where I actually sew it into the mannequin. So then I had to cut the mannequin like fabric. <laughs> Please. At this point, I might as well just get a new mannequin, it's pretty old. Um, but then this part is pretty much done and I want to show you. I'm thinking about adding more of a gradient into it so it's not so contrasty like Stark. But, you know, we'll see. Now I'm going to begin cutting out the mesh. The mesh I don't need in the front part anymore. I decided to make it a deep V neckline and have the sleeves all the way at the top. So I'm cutting it out carefully with the smallest scissors possible so I don't cut off any of the lace and any of the beading. So I wanted a detachable train. At this point, I didn't have enough of the white material underneath, so I got some new fabric here in Denmark. This is just a nice little satin. I'm going back on the same pattern so it has the same shape, but I'm going to alter it just slightly so it has enough train and flow in the back. I made sure to only cut out the pieces that I needed, which are the side, side back, and back. You need to modify the side back and the back to be the longest parts with the new shape. I messed up the sizing on the side back, so I had to go back and add an extra piece. 
Lastly, I just needed to bring this to my sewing machine and assemble it all together. Because this is detachable, I needed to make a separate waistband as well. And then after that, all I had to do was take over the last pieces of my lace and then apply it. I was running out of time, so I decided to use fabric glue on this part. Obviously, you don't have to have anything on your train, but I decided to only have embellishments at the top so it melted into the dress versus just looking like it laid on top. 